Hello friends on the internet, I'm Steven and in the next 20 minutes we will create this beautiful custom bottom navigation bar in Flutter. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. This would support me a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below and I will try to get in touch with all of you. So let's start and have fun. To save some time, we will start from this basic setup I made for you. And all it contains basically is a main, where we have our home linked. We have some theme data for coloring. We have our device preview implemented. This is for displaying the phone emulator like this. And we have our home screen, where we have a page view with three screens where we can swipe through and the three screens only have a container in it with the central text and some styling of the text that's it for now so let's start by using our custom bottom navigation bar and we can start by creating a status widget and we will call the status widget custom bottom navigation bar and of course we have to import our material the dart so we can save this and then we can go on our home screen at the end of our scaffold and at the bottom navigation bar Okay, fine. Now we can start on designing our wave for the custom bottom navigation bar. First, we want to create a size box. Within the size box, we will give it some properties like the height of 110 and then a child. This child will be a material. And our material will have a background color of colors.transparent and another child, which is a stack. Our stack will have some children. For now it's only one children, but later we will have multiple children. So we have positioned and our positioned will be at the bottom. So bottom zero and we'll have a child which is the clip path and our clip path will have a clipper which is a custom clipper, the wave clipper I made for you. I will explain later in detail what every line exactly does, but for now just take it as it is and trust me this will work. Okay. Then our clip pass will have a child and this child is a container. Our container will have a height of 60 and width of media query dot of oh, of context dot size dot width. Okay. Then our container will have a decoration and the decoration will be box decoration with a gradient, gradient and the gradient is a linear gradient which will have some colors and our colors will be the colors I defined in the theme. So we can write theme.ofcontext.primarycolor the first one is with alpha 150, so it's not the full alpha, but like the half one, so it's a bit lighter. And it will go to theme.ofContext.primary color, so to the full alpha. And if we save, we can see our wave layout, our wave clipper worked. And our gradient but at the moment it's not the correct direction so we have to give our 
relate well, our linear gradient some properties like begin which is a line and uh, line and dot top center and an end of alignment dot bottom center okay let's save this let's clean it up here like this and now we have our wavy bottom navigation the next thing we will do is implementing the text so we have our text for the navigation bar so we will add another position positions and this one will be at the bottom two but a little bit offset like 10 the width will be media query dot of context dot size dot width so it's 100 percent of the screen width and it will have a child and this child is row this is some children and the children are some text oh the text will be focus for the first one with some styling so style text style and we will give it a font weight of like font weight dot let's take bold and we can duplicate it three two times sorry so we have three in total and we can rename this to relax and rename this to sleep and if we save it now we can see our text here so we have to change our main axis alignment to main axis alignment space evenly okay so now it kind of works we have to give it some spaces between our texts so just tap in here and here and we will add the container and now it's aligned properly okay the next thing we're gonna do is we will implement our floating buttons yeah so for that we will need another position which will be positions and this position will be at the bottom with of 45 and the width of media query dot of context dot size dot width so full width of the screen and we'll have a child which is row 2 with some children oh and the children will be our custom nav items so we have to make a custom nav item okay let's save this for now and go in our custom nav item dot and create a new stateless widget okay and we can call it custom nav item we have to implement our material dot and now we need some properties we will have final icon icon data name it icon we will have final integer of id so we can tap through them and display the pages later and we will have final function of set page so we will later give this function to it for now we can comment this out because we won't need it at the moment so let's create that uh, let's create our constructor and we can delete our key because at the moment we don't need it and it's easier to read okay now we need to return 
our custom nav item. So first we we'll take a gesture detector because we want it to be clickable later. So and the on tap will be empty for now like this and the child will be a circle avatar and the radius is 30 background color is our primary color so theme dot of context dot primary color and within it we have a child another circle avatar and this circle avatar oh we need to write in the okay and it will have a radius of 25 so it's inner radius which will be white later if it's selected we'll have a background color and we will give it a background color of white for now we will change this later and if it's selected it will be white if it's not selected it will be transparent but for now let's give it the colors dot white dot with opacity of say 0 0.9 so it's opacity of 90 percent okay then we will need a child and this child will be an icon which is an icons or oh, we can give it directly the icon from the icon data sorry my fault so we can write an icon and it will have a color this color will change later too so it's depending on um, of if it's active or not active but for now let's make it black okay so we can save this and then we can go back to our custom button navigation bar it's in our row and give it some children so we have custom nav item and our custom nav item will have an icon and this icon for the first one will be icons dot bubble chart and the ID will be zero. Okay, then we need two other one with an ID of one and an ID of two. And for the second nav item, we will have the lens cape icon, and for the last one we will have a brightness 3, so it's a moon icon. You can save it. And now we have our buttons. Okay, We need to align them properly. So we have to set the main axis alignment. The main axis alignment is based evenly. Save it. And we need to add some spaces, like for the text. So just Let's tap here and here and add a container. Let's get some functionality to our bottom navigation bar. First, we start by adding some variables to our global state. This is not the perfect way to do it, but in our case, it's okay. Later, we would have a better state management and we would use like a provider or something similar to manage this but for now we'll just add the page controller name it page controller and set it to a page controller with initial page of zero and we need an integer of current index and we will set it to zero two Okay, then we can go to our custom bottom navigation bar, custom bottom navigation bar, and we will add a simple script or function to set our page. 
Okay, so we have a set page and we need the set state functionality. So we have to make it the state full widget or the state less widget. Then we can use set state and within our set state, we call the page controller dot jump to page and it's the current index. Okay. Oh, we only need main dot dot once. And now we can go back to our home screen. And within our home screen, we have to set our page view physics to non scroll, sorry, to never scroll the scroll physics. So we can't swipe through our pages anymore. But we have to click through them. Okay, so we have to save this. Oh, we have to save this too. Now we can't swipe anymore. Okay, now we have to add our controller. So controller is our page controller. Okay, so now we have a page controller attached to it. And the last step for this will be to add our functionality to the nav item buttons. Okay, so our empty on tab will now be set the current index to the ID of the button oh. and we call set page like this. Okay, can't find set page. And I don't know exactly why. Ah, we have to uncomment this, put it there, and okay, like this. And we have to give our set page function down to our custom nav item. Okay, so we can go here and here and here, press enter, then set page and pass the set page function, but without our parentheses, so it won't call it immediately, but only if we push it. Okay, if we save, now we should be able to switch between our pages. Okay, nice. The next step is to change the look of our buttons depending on if this is active or not active. So we have to check our background color is okay, but we have to check our inner circle avatar background color. So the check we will do is pretty easy. We check our current index. And if it's equal to the ID of the button, so this button is the active button, then we will have it white. If it is not equal, so it's not the active button, then we will have it com colors dot transparent. So only the active button has a white background. Okay, now we have to change the icon color for the non-active ones, so they should be white, so we can see them better. Okay, let's go here and just copy this line, paste it here. Oh, with our background color, of course, and we want it to be black if it's active, and be white with opacity of 90% if it's not active and it imported main dot dot twice but we only need it once so now we have our fully functional custom button navigation bar 